Hey there children, it's me Grimbles, and I'm starting this video with a confession. You see, I don't like to read. In fact, of the 60 books I've read in the last three years, every single one of them was narrated to me on Audible, usually by Stefan Rudnicki. This isn't a paid advertisement, by the way. I legitimately just like the way his voice sounds, and you should listen to him read Heroes Die right now. It's good sci-fi, read by an amazing narrator. Shameless fanboying aside, I'm not kidding about the reading thing. Adults who read usually fit into one of two categories. Rookie repair guys who fear death and read the wiring diagrams, and adults who were told they were gifted as kids for reading a lot, when in reality, they don't have friends, and now they're desperately clinging to the one time in their lives, when they felt they were superior to anyone else. Needless to say, I think visual novels are trash. They're choose-your-own-adventure comic books that serve as mental heroin for people too weak-willed to talk to women on their own, and instead have to pretend an immortal vampire finds their self insert interesting. Yet, despite all my hatred for reading, I still have a soft spot for the SCP Foundation. Something about a bunch of people getting together to write creepypastas online that all bleed into each other narratively has always warmed my heart. So, when my buddy told me there was a game that let you emulate being a member of the O5 Council and manage your own SCP facility named Lobotomy Corporation, I was intrigued. Unfortunately, he also mentioned this was a visual novel with cutscenes between every day in the game. This would have been a deal breaker, if not for the fact that one of the developers had the foresight to realize that there were some players who didn't want to waste their time with the uninteresting aspects of the game and included a skip button, which I make sure I use to the fullest. Alright now, gaming review formulas on YouTube dictate that I should introduce the game by explaining its plot. However, as visual novel slideshows are a weak vehicle for storytelling and I skipped all of them, I have no idea what the game is about. I could check the wiki, but as that would involve reading, I'm instead going to make up a plot for the game based on what I saw in the gameplay. Don't correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, I'm not going to read them. Lobotomy Corporation takes place in our dystopic future where Amazon has completely overrun the world. All the forests are gone after Jeff Bezos personally cut down every tree to make his shipping boxes and rampant consumerism is at an all-time high. People want their cheap goods, and these cheap goods need to come in boxes. To fix the supply shortage of cardboard, someone in R&D realized you can make shipping boxes by harnessing the unholy energy of gods and demons by having overworked wage slaves act as their personal therapists. To do that, you have to choose one of four interaction types. They are victim blaming, telekinesis, third basing, and gaslighting. Obviously, while gaslighting tends to work on cosplayers with low self-esteem in the short term, you may not like the consequences which finally makes a call-out post about it on Twitter. This is where the first part of the gameplay comes in. What seems like a very simple round of rock, paper, scissors at first quickly spirals into a random guessing game. Does the dog creature, made of the sewn-together flesh of previous employees, like to be yelled at, or does it like a gentle handy? You don't know until you start sacrificing your employees to generate research points that you then use to better understand your SCPs. Then, when you think you've gotten everything figured out, the game starts throwing curveballs at you to keep you on your toes. Speaking of toes, check out these shoes. On paper, these shoes are harmless. Employees with low stat lines can work with them without a problem, until the shoes take control of their mind or the mind of someone else with weak will and make them go on a murdering spree throughout the facility. This will ultimately cause you to self-reflect and ask, where did it all go wrong? Before you remember to check the manager's notes and you discover that nobody with a level 3 or lower in the 4-figure shuffle can handle the shoes. Random babysitting conditions like these escalate until you're dealing with a tree that seduces your employees and turns them into ants if you don't spend enough time with it, and a train that kills everyone in a straight line if you forget to get a Chuck E. Cheese token from the ticket booth every 30 seconds. This would probably be a good time to mention the classifications for the SCPs. SCPs are broken into two categories, tools and anomalies. Tools are artifacts that don't generate Amazon boxes, but allegedly have other benefits. I'm going to be real here. In my time playing, I've gotten an Iron Maiden that kills my employees, the aforementioned Demon Train, a safe room that causes SCPs to break out all over the facility if you use it, a music box that drives your employees insane, and a notebook that makes my employees blow up. At one point, I was able to use the music box to boost employee sanity while choosing a high-level SCP, but otherwise I find them mostly useless. After tools, you get into the actual anomalies. These range anywhere from the perfectly safe fairies to literal gods. As it gets more difficult to handle them, the rewards for each of them go up. Not only do they offer more boxes whenever you work with them, but as their danger ranking goes up, the gear you can farm from them improves. Sure, a bee on a stick is great when you're dealing with Santa dragging himself across the facility, but when Nemesis breaks out, if you're not running an entire dispatch team with late game gear, you're gonna get steamrolled. If you haven't figured it out yet, this game is very hard. And that's not just the ex-journalist of me talking. I mean, this game is hard. As someone who grew up on broken and janky Flash games, I'm no newcomer to challenging and oftentimes broken gameplay. However, Lobotomy Corporation is one of those games that stands as the pinnacle of jank. Take combat, for instance. If an SCP breaks out of containment, you have to send agents to go suppress it. it. Makes perfect sense, right? As an added depth of gameplay, sometimes you can avoid SCP attacks by having your agents move into different rooms in the facility or go behind the SCP while it's charging its laser. 
To do that, you have to manually select all agents currently engaging the creature and then tell them to walk to a room behind the one the SCP is in. You can't just tell them to move into a point in the room they're currently in, or they'll stand still and need a laser to the face. Also, good luck singling out employees during melee fights. Most of the time, the whole situation turns into a giant game of paranormal whack-a-mole, and you'll lose agents because the guy with the lowest health is at the bottom of the stack, and you can't get your healing bullets to them before they get eviscerated. Now, you'd think, between juggling the SCPs and trying to keep everyone alive, the game wouldn't have anything else to throw at you, and you'd be wrong. You see, to keep players from farming low-level SCPs for an easy victory, the game sets meltdowns for you to contend with after a certain number of interactions have occurred. These meltdowns come in two varieties. Containment failures and daylight savings assaults. Containment failures tend to be preferred at the beginning. A random number of SCPs threaten to breach containment, and you send agents to go soothe them. This is great until you randomly pull censored or any other god-level SCP. Unlike the mid-level goons, these SCPs are prone to mood swings and are just waiting for an excuse to break out of their cells. A perfect example of this is the silent orchestra. If your employee is too good at touching them, it makes them want to break out of their cell and perform for you. If you interact positively or negatively with them twice, they breach. So if the lottery lands on the silent orchestra twice, you might as well just restart the day there. They're going to breach, kill everyone who didn't get out of the department fast enough, and then take all the loot boxes you've generated from that point. Late game, when you have three gods in your basement and the next meltdown is going to trigger 21 containment chambers, you're way more terrified of what the lottery is going to roll than what might attack from the shadows. Which brings us to the daylight savings meltdowns. For players just starting out, these are the scarier of the two. Random groups of enemies spawn in the facility, and you have to kill them. When your employees are just starting out, they tend to go squish pretty easily, and a noon assault can wipe a budding facility staff. By late game though, most of your employees are wearing an actual skin of gods, and turn these attacks into a quick box farm. Well, as long as the clowns don't make it to the max level containment cells. If you're still with me, and you've gotten this far, then boy howdy do I have some bad news for you. As is tradition with visual novels, this game has multiple endings. To get the best ending in the game, you not only have to survive 50 days of hell, but you have to complete an arbitrary list of objectives, most of which contradict one another. My favorite example of these is complete the day in X amount of minutes with subdue this many high level anomalies on this day. By the way, you have to complete all of these before the final week or you'll get the worst ending. Considering my first playthrough is 50 hours, it makes you wonder if this isn't some kind of sick revenge scheme for creating the Korean-Mexican fusion and birthing the Kim Chirito. With the full knowledge that to get the best ending, you have to complete every objective from every department, survive day 50, and complete the SCP wiki, you might be asking yourself, man, how am I supposed to do all that? And the answer is, you're not! Not the first time anyway. Despite everything being stacked against the player, you have a single advantage in this game. You can restart. If you restart a day, you recover all your dead employees and gear, which makes troubleshooting new anomalies easy. If you restart a week, you go back to the first day of that week, but take all the SCP research and gear that you've accumulated up to that point with you. This becomes very useful in the late game, where you can effectively restart week 9 ad infinitum and grind a super army of employees to take on the world. Even if you reach the end and can't beat it for whatever reason, that's not a problem. Just restart your run. When you restart a run, you keep everything that you've obtained up to that point except for employees, and it comes with you into the new playthrough, which makes your first few weeks a whole lot easier. Now that we've gotten gameplay out of the way, I can confidently say that this game is a mess. The first time I started the game, I started with a tool and had to restart right out the gate. Another time, I was farming the Queen of Hatred when she double stacked her debuffs and broke out of confinement without so much as a warning. Even on my last playthrough, I accidentally rolled the same SCP twice and was able to effectively farm it twice as fast thanks to it being on the same floor as my two highest ranked employees. This is just a sampling of the weird stuff I've seen, by the way. Much like any good game, Lobotomy Corporation has so many bugs that I legitimately have no idea if the Parasite Tree, throwing one of my employees out mid-research so it can infect an employee standing right outside the containment door as a bug, or working as intended. A final thing I want to touch on before I end this review uh, would best be described using a Tony Robbins quote, uh, if you'll stay with me. If you get caught masturbating, and you stop, then you're just the guy who got caught. But if you keep going, then the guys who caught you become gay for watching. Success is all about finding the hidden advantages in a negative situation. Now, if me quoting one of the shadiest businessmen of all time in regards to self-gratification doesn't make any sense with you, I'm asking that you stick with me for a second. Let's say a mid-level SCP breaks out of his containment, but you're worried the employees won't be strong enough to put it back in the box without taking some casualties. Rather than dealing with it yourself, you can let another SCP break out and do some of the work for you. Much like a sub 5'10 king at the gym when he learns working out won't make you appear taller, the SCPs will lash out at everything in sight. And, while this technique is incredibly useful in the late game, make sure you don't send a nuclear warhead to handle a cockroach. Wrapping up this video, I've saved the worst for last. It's the music. It comes in two flavors. Everything is fine. 
and everything is on fire. I've now heard both tracks so much at this point that I've just muted it, and I have red letter media up in the background whenever I'm playing. It makes the experience much more enjoyable. There is some other music in the game, but it shows up so late that by the time you finally get there, it's a breath of fresh air for a corpse that needed it two weeks ago. There you have it, folks. That's Lobotomy Corporation in a nutshell. An abusive game that I very much detest and wish I'd never installed. And you want to know what the worst part is? Despite how unfun I find the gameplay, how awful the music is, how insanely difficult and unforgiving it is, I still find myself coming back to it every so often. It's like breaking up with an abusive boyfriend and then calling him over for a booty call and letting him back into your life for a week when you remember the time he helped your aging father fix his car. I absolutely know I shouldn't go back to the game as it causes nothing but undue stress, but even now as I finish this review, I'm considering a new run instead of getting to work on my next educational video. This game is awful, emotionally abusive, and spiteful, and I love pretty much everything about it, except for the cutscenes. I still have no idea what the actual plot is, and I'm going to leave it that way. I give it... 5 Stockholm Syndromes out of 5. Now excuse me while I go get an actual lobotomy to see if I can forget this game. See you next time. Alright guys, I hope you appreciate it. Uh, this video took a lot longer than expected because it was originally going to be a uh, like a, a playthrough where I didn't read any of the flavor text. And actually I ended up doing that, but then I found out I couldn't narrate over it. And I just gave up and made a review. Uh, also, I'm moving jobs and moving across the country, so this will probably be my last video for... I don't know, probably two to three months. I, I'll try to work on the educational video, but I really doubt I'm going to get that away before I move. So I'll see you guys as soon as I get back. Sorry for the hiatus right after starting a YouTube channel.